Lord, and welcome to the Chelsea T. Fresnel Show, and I'm your host, Pastor Chelsea T. Fresnel. Welcome to Authentic Living, and I'm excited that you've joined me here at WWWKAZ TV, and today is a day of thanksgiving. We thank our Heavenly Father, we thank Him for His Son, Jesus Christ, and we thank Jesus Christ for the power of the Holy Ghost. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Authentic Living, and I am excited that this is a new show and a new taping. Check out my new background, looking good on purpose. And this show is still a show where we celebrate, motivate, and decorate. We celebrate family, friends, and faith. We also motivate you to take your dreams out of your mind and make them into a reality. We decorate too. We'll transform your space into a spectacular place. And we have a passion for fashion where looking good is on purpose. Well, today I want to share a little bit of something, something with you on today that's on my heart. And one of the things that I want to encourage you as we've come out of this season of celebration of Thanksgiving, but we know every day is a day of Thanksgiving. But on today, I want to share with you with the power to stay focused. How many of us have a desire to accomplish certain goals, to accomplish certain tasks in the course of a day, and we find ourselves distracted? And at the end of the day, when we look over our checklist, we have not completed as much as we wanted to complete. Or even if we look over our life, we get to a place and, um, or a certain age, and, and we're not where we want to be. Well, today is a day that we can change our course of being distracted. We're going to talk about being focused. And, and I want to say to you on today, one of the things that you have to do is learn to evaluate your life. And I've evaluated my life, and it's a long life process that we begin to look at our life and, and how we're spending um, this gift that God has given us. I know for myself, I've lost some time with the choices that I've made in my past, but I thank God that every day is a new day filled with grace and new mercies. So you're one decision away from changing your destiny if you don't like it. So let's talk about being focused and also looking at those things that distract us. Because I believe and I posted it on my Facebook a couple of days ago. If you can get out of the, the, the frame and look at the bigger picture, which when you get out of the frame and see the bit of bigger picture, then you can, that means when you look at the frame, there's a boundary, there are limits. So sometimes we have to come out of the frame and look at the bigger picture and not allow ourselves to become distracted because there are different things that will come that we're faced with and we've got to you know make some destiny minded decision whether or not um, we're going to spend time in the negative or we're going to spend time with the shouldas and the wouldas and what's wrong and what's not working or we're going to pay all attention to uh, the problems and not really focus on the solutions so today that's what we want to talk about i want you to really look at your life and look at the distractions because usually Distractions, they come the same way, they just have on a different outfit. So, you know, you may be distracted this way, and once you master that distraction, distraction goes and change and puts on a blue dress instead of a red dress. And so the thing is, it's not so much what color the distraction is, but we've got to deal with what is distracting me and why. Because a lot of times we take our eyes off of the prize, what's really ahead of us. And that prize is ultimately... Um, fulfilling purpose and advancing the kingdom of God and, and, and sharing the gospel, the good news. And so that's the bigger picture. It's really not about being a mommy or a wife or a business owner or a pastor. All of those are contributing factors, but that's not the bigger picture. The bigger picture is inviting someone to receive Jesus Christ as their personal savior, inviting someone to become, you know, a doer of the word and, and not just to hear only, inviting someone to have a relationship. That's the bigger picture. But what happens is a lot of times we get stuck and we never get to see the bigger picture. A lot of us, especially when I say a lot of us, I'm including myself. 
we have to realize that there are times that when we can't see the bigger picture, the distraction, because we don't know what's going to happen or we don't know the outcome, but you really do know the outcome. You really do within your spirit. Your spirit knows the outcome. And what's that outcome is that God has a plan for you. And it's a good plan. He, he, he knows the thoughts that he's thinking towards you and they're good and they're not evil. So there, there is a plan for you, but the distractions come to make you think that there's not a good plan, that God doesn't have a good outcome. And really he does have a good outcome. We, we let the distractions take our eye off of the bigger picture, which is advancing the kingdom, making a difference in somebody's life. Um, being our brother's keeper. So we get caught up in our own little distraction modes and we never get to the bigger picture. And so what we have to learn how to do is how do I avoid distractions? How do I destroy distractions? How do I eliminate distraction? And the way that I believe that you're able to eliminate those distractions is, is writing down the vision. Um, studying the Word of God, praying, fasting, fellowshipping. These are just different ways that we can um, engage ourselves in in order to avoid distraction. I believe Habakkuk in chapter 2 talks about writing the vision down, making it plain so that when the runner runneth past it that that he can even see what's written so so one of the things to avoid distraction i can pull from that principle in habeca is to what write down the vision we've got to learn and make a conscious decision of how to keep it before our front list what's the bigger picture here and not get stuck in the minutia there there is bigger than the the little onesies and twosies that we come up with we have uh uh a commandment we have a charge and so when we begin to look at those distractions we've got to write them down because once you write down the vision and you pay attention to the vision then when that distraction comes you got to get your front list it's like that bit you got to keep your focus you got to stay focus. Why? Because I have an outcome. I have a bigger picture. There's a purpose. There's a plan. And, and, and remember that the things that we go through, God doesn't want to destroy us. He wants to develop us. He wants to do what, what, what a photographer does with a, with a film. You know, in the before technology and all of this wonderful stuff we have now, he would take a negative and he would put it in the dark room. But it, it, it's not, you know, you got to go through that process. So there may be times that there is a dark process, but you've got to realize that in that dark room, there's development going on. And that development is what? For a picture. It's going to produce a picture. So when I'm in a dark place, that dark place is not to distract me. It's to develop me. That dark place is for me to find peace. It's for me to find a closer relationship because it's not his desire for me to stay in that place. What I've learned is I have to make sure that I don't let a temporary problem become permanent for me because a lot of times seasons are temporary. And so I can't make a permanent decision on a temporary situation. That's a distraction. And so what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that you've got to get to a place where you can identify the distractions that's in your life that's trying to keep you from that bigger picture. But if you write that vision down and keep it before your front list when you're coming and when you're going, then you'll be able to maintain your focus. Why? Because I won't be upset because someone said something or a rumor got started or people are that that's a distraction why it's set to what take my attention off of the bigger picture and what's the bigger picture it's about advancing the kingdom fulfilling my purpose and living the plan that God has for me and so what do you have to do you have to make sure that you maintain your focus you got to keep your eye you see this keep stay focused Take a picture, write it down. Don't get caught up on the small things and you miss the bigger picture. So you have to make sure, okay, well, Pastor, how do I, you know, know that I'm being distracted? Because you're not 
accomplishing the things that you want to accomplish. Look at your checklist. What, what do I need to do? If you need to go to school and you're saying, well, I don't know, I don't have time, then there's distraction. And so what? That, that what you don't have is keeping you from what? From moving into the bigger picture, from moving into purpose. Well, you don't know, I don't have a car. Get on the bus. Don't let transportation distract you from getting to the bigger picture. I don't have the money. Don't let not having the money, what, distract you from the bigger picture. What I have to do is come up with, not by my own might and not by my own spirit, but I've got to pray that the Holy Ghost will give me witty inventions so that I can create multiple streams of income so that that won't distract me. So I can't spend all day, oh Lord Jesus, I need some money. What I'm gonna do it, I'm not. Mm -mm. He has given you the power and the ability to get well. He has given you what you need to what? Create a stream of income. So the thing is that you've got to learn how to maintain your focus. What's the bigger picture? Whatever obstacles come up is opportunity to those that have wisdom. Sometimes obstacles, you know, on the other side of an obstacle is an opportunity for those that what? Stay focused and persevere. It's not on, you'll never see the opportunity if you get stuck on the obstacle. But for those of us that stay focused and say, there's a bigger picture to this, I will not get stuck in the, 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 the small things and what's not, I'm going to not just I'm not going to remain in a in a problem mindset, if I can say that. Stop just spending your time on the problem. We've got to learn how to develop solutions. How can I make this better? How can I, you know, accomplish this goal? What do I need to do? We must develop a plan of action for our life. God has given us what we need by way of his written word and his revealed word through the power of the Holy Ghost to what? To help us have a plan of action for life. You can't wake up in the morning and you don't have a plan. You just gonna get up and go. That's not gonna, you're gonna be distracted all day because once you make up in your mind, you gotta know that it is obtainable. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. I can accomplish this if it be the will of the Lord concerning my life. I can do this. And so you develop that mindset that, okay, pull up your sleeves. What do I need to do in the name of Jesus, under the power of the Holy Ghost to make this happen? Why? So that God can be glorified and I can be satisfied. God will get the glory in whatever accomplishments I have. And then I get to have the satisfaction action of the fruit of my labor. And so we've got to wake up with a plan of action for our life. Don't just wake up. You don't have no plan. You just going to get up. You're going to be distracted. If you wake up and say, okay, I'm going to Washington DC today. And you've got every intention of going to Washington. You you've got your suitcase packed. You you've got your map quest. You on your way to Washington. And you, why? Because you have a reason you're going to Washington. You're going to go and meet president Obama. You have an appointment. He's called you. You're on your way. You've got your plane ticket. You have your hotel. So you wake up with a plan. I'm on my way to Washington, right? And then on your way to Washington, you get to the airport. Someone comes up and say, you know what? I have a free ticket to the Bahamas uh, here. You can, but you have to use it today. Here's your ticket to the Bahamas. Now that's going to be a distraction. Why? Because you, you, you got to stay focused. You have an appointment. You have somewhere to go and someone to, to spend time with. So what do I need to do? I got to stay. I got to go to Washington. I can't go to the Bahamas. Why? Because I have, I have, I have a vision. I have something I, I need to go and handle. I have an appointment. I have a schedule. And so what we have to do is just because someone offers me something to the Bahamas, but I, I got a plan and I'm on my way, I got to stay focused. Even though they said free, I got to stay focused. Even though they said you, you won't get this again, I got to stay focused. Why? Because I'm focused on the fact that I've already have a schedule. I already have somewhere to go. Don't let the side lines, you know, the side shows get you off track because when you get in Bahamas, then you're going to miss out on what you had planned for you and purpose for you in DC because you over here in Bahamas. So with all that being said, 
I'm praying that you will be focused, that you will get yourself together because you have somewhere to go and you need to identify the distractions so that we can finish the course that's set before us. I love you. God bless you. Call my office, 216-481-5674, and have a wonderful day in the Lord.